Endospores. Endospores are dormant structures that surround the DNA and allow resistance to heat, chemicals, and drying. Endospores are composed of exosporium, a protein covering, spore coat, layers of protein, cortex, peptidoglycan, and core, or spore protoplast, consisting of the core wall, cytoplasm, nucleoid, and ribosomes. Shown here is a bacterial endospore. Notice the spore coat, cortex, exosporium, core wall, and DNA. Here is an electron micrograph of an endospore inside of the sporangium. Endospore formation, sporulation. Nutrient depletion is a major stimulus for endospore formation. Once this happens, the cell is committed to forming an endospore. The cell is now called a sporulating cell, or sporangium. Endospore formation takes about 6 to 10 hours. Steps in endospore formation. Number 1. The DNA is duplicated and becomes more dense. Number 2. The cell is separated into a sporangium and a forospore. This will become the endospore. Number 3. The sporangium engulfs the forospore and begins to produce spore layers around the forospore. Number 4. The cortex and outer coat layers are developed. And number 5. The mature spore is completely formed. Here we see a vegetative cell forming an endospore and a complete endospore with remaining sporangium. Heat resistance. The heat resistance of the endospore is due to these factors. The presence of dipoclinic acid that combines with calcium ions. This combination helps dehydrate the endospore. The core contains small proteins that help protect the DNA from damage and drying. Temperatures of at least 121 degrees Celsius are necessary to destroy an endospore. This temperature can be achieved in the autoclave. Endospores are also resistant to drying, ultraviolet light, and strong acids and bases. Endospores must be destroyed before materials are sterile. Germination. To break the dormancy of the endospore, Conditions for good growth of the cell are necessary. There has to be a specific chemical or environmental stimulus along with the presence of water. The stimulus for germination varies among different species, but it is typically an amino acid or an inorganic salt. During germination, enzymes are produced that degrade the cortex and expose the core to water. Calcium dipocolonate is lost during this process. The core rehydrates, and the cell begins to grow out of the endospore coats. The entire process takes about one and a half hours. Endospore stain. Because of its high resistance to chemicals, the endospore does not stain using routine staining procedures. In a regular stain, endospores appear colorless. A special staining technique is required to stain the endospore. The two medically significant endospore formers are Clostridium species and Bacillus species. The endospore stain allows you to view the endospore to determine its size, shape, and location inside of the cell. Let's watch the spore stain procedure. The first step in the endospore stain is to make the smear air dry and heat fix the slide. You place the slide over steaming water and then you put malachite green on the smear, right over where your smear is on the slide. Leave the malachite green on the slide to steam for one minute. The malachite green will steam into the endospores and stain them a blue-green color. After one minute, you will take the slide and rinse it with distilled water. And then 
continue the stain by using safranin as a counter stain. This, the safranin will stain the vegetative cells red and the endospores will remain a blue-green color. Leave the safranin on for 30 seconds. then you will clean your, dry your slide to use under the microscope. The slide is now ready to view under the microscope. Shown here are the endospores. This concludes our activity, endospores.